Hey, what's up, guys? Six somebody here. Let top eight your ball. <laughs> Let's go. That's how it goes. They keep asking about the best when they know it's me. Okay. Asking about the rest when they know it's me. Straight in, I guess. You know it's me. You see what happens in South Africa, right? If you're watching outside of South Africa, there's three big teams that have got the most supporters. You got KZ Chiefs, you got Land Pirates, and you got Mamlodi Sundowns. So Sundowns on Friday, through to the next town of CAF, their fans are happy. Orlando Pirates, 7 1 against Golden Arrows, their fans are happy. KZ Chiefs, outplayed by Chiba United. <laughs> All right, guys, that club, I tell you, man, they are dragging their feet towards the end of the season. There's two factors I want to talk about. Kevin Johnson, when I, I it's over. I, it's finished. Like, I, no, I, there is no way, no way Kevin Johnson is going to be the head coach of Kaiser Chiefs. I can guarantee you that. Like, he's been out the game for a long time. You know, he was an assistant at al He came back. And I'm just sort of thinking he's just been out the game a long time. And not only even that, it's him trying to smooth talk the fans in the media. You know, he tries to smooth talk them. We're going to play like this. And we're going to give it our all. And we need to win. And we're going to play for Luke Flores. And, and that's the performances you give. Like, there's a difference between what he talks about in the media and what is seen on the pitch. Yes, and you can't be using big words like we're going to play for Luke. This game is for Luke. No, do not do that. This job is too big for you, man. And the fans don't believe you. I don't believe you. So the whole play acting thing, I think it can stop right now. The players, you guys, <laughs> I mean, these players have checked out. They have really checked out. You know, I mean, I mentioned in my video over the weekend, I don't know, watch a single thing that they talk about. Whenever they interviewed on match day, I don't listen to a thing that they say. No chance. They don't understand what it means to play for the badge. Not only even that, they disrespect the fans. And I'll even go on further. I'll call you guys by name. Why? Because you don't respect the fans. Why should we respect you? Solomons, Smango, Dove, Ngobo, Castillo, Mart, Modi, Sail, Ranga, Mdansane, and each and every one of you at that football club, where is your pride? Like, where is your pride? You come to this club and you don't even have pride to at least show the fans you can play? And why are you guys playing like you're going to get another chance? I can guarantee you one thing for sure. Some of y'all are leaving at the end of the season. Ah, that one. Ah, you're not staying here. You're going to other clubs and you're going to go fight your relegations and your mid-tables and what you guys were doing before y'all got here. But you're not staying at Kaiser Chiefs. That's one thing I can guarantee. You're not good enough to be at this level. That I can guarantee. And for my beloved management, you thought I forgot about y'all? No, 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 no. I just wanted to send my love and say, enjoy the mid-table fight. A broadcaster, an MC, and someone whose English is better than mine. <laughs> Karabo Pasha is in the building tonight. And I simply asked him the question, can Mamluri Sunlands really win the CAF Champions League? We have another guest on playing the field of shakes. Now, this guest, I tell you something, man, he's a broadcaster. He's a journalist, I think. He's an MC. And one thing I can confirm to you guys is his English is far better than mine. Karabo Pasha, how are you, sir? <laughs> uh, greetings to yourself and greetings to all the viewers as well. I think uh, let's correct something. I think your English is much, much better than mine. Uh, I think I just wanted to get that out of the way. <laughs> no, I, I hear you on that. I hear you on that. I mean, for me, one thing that I'm surprised by with you, man, is we see you almost everywhere. I've seen you on screen when you're doing the Phoenix games. I've seen you um, in like press conferences as well, asking questions. And I'm asking myself like, so, Karma Pasha, is he a broadcaster? Is he a journalist? Is he jack of all trades? How would you like to describe yourself? Yeah, I think uh, first and foremost, let me say I'm I'm a broadcaster uh, for Supersport, uh, presenter for Supersport, uh, predominantly doing the DDC, the South African Reserve League. And uh, yeah, I think uh, journalism is just something that I love. I, I, I want to learn more. I want to better my trade. So, you know, attending press conferences is really just to understand the mentality of the coaches and the of players as well. I've played the game as well. So 
uh, for me, that's literally why I do attend you know, these uh, press conferences and uh, football matches. One thing I also love about you is the fact that I know you watch football because of the way you speak, the way you ask questions, the way even when you analyze in terms of the games that will be shown on Supersport as well. I've got one question for you, man. It's been the big talking point over this past weekend. Did it cross the line, Garabu? Yeah, uh, to be honest, I think it did. I think it did cr uh, cross the line. Uh, you know, we've spoken to as well. You know, post match to the coach uh, of um, of uh, of Yanga. Uh, you know, he also said, you know, why didn't the referee go to check out the, the VR because you know it was in use on the day. Uh, but just to to keep it simple, I would say yes, it did cross the line, and uh, it was an unfair, uh, not given goal uh, from the match day referee, and absolutely nothing to do with sundowns. Yeah, see, that's 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 quite, kind of crazy because I mean I watched myself and I'll be honest, I wasn't one hundred percent sure that it did cross the line. But then I also did say if they gave it, I wouldn't have necessarily a problem. I want to ask this: Sundowns, the chances of them winning the CAF Champions League, man. Um, of course, I think their performances could have been a little bit better. Some people are saying they're tired. What do you what do you say with regards to their chances of winning it? Listen, I think I think uh, they've got four matches to play uh, in, in in the Kev Champions League, and uh, if they win all four or draw two and win two, they also have a massive chance of winning it. I think they can. I think they've got the players, they've got the ability, they've got the coach, they've got the technical team as well. Uh, I'd like to believe that they've got the experience as well. I mean, they've played uh, nine seasons in succession, you know, playing the group stages of Kev Champions League. They've accumulated that experience now. So I think. I, I, Listen, I think they've got the know-how. I think they can win the Champions League. It's now up to the players, the mentality as well as to how they navigate themselves through this busy schedule that they do have. Yeah, no, 100%. I definitely do agree with that. Does Rulani have to win the CAF Champions League considering the amounts that have been spent and the investments that have been done to this team? Yeah, Sheikh, so... Of course, of course. I think uh, Coach Rulani is not uh, judged on the Premier Soccer League uh, anymore. I think he's, what, uh, 10, 11 points clear now. And uh, the, the signings, particularly the signings that he's made in the January transfer window, tells you that he's strengthening to play continental football. I mean, it's Mbingo Silot, you know, by far one of the best players in our league. Uh, you know, they've also signed, uh, I think, the, the South American as well, just Escovel as well, one Escovel of the most talented him, footballers yeah. with his left foot. Absolutely. So those are signings for continental football and also to try and compete for the African Football League later in the year or defend it. Uh, they've also uh, possibly might be playing the Club World Cup. So those are signings uh, of, of international quality and standard. So, of mm -hmm. course, uh, Coach Rolani will be charged uh, if, if uh, on winning uh, the Kev Champions League. And of course, he's got to win it. I think he really has got to win it. He's got the players, he's got the ammunition, uh, he's got a very good technical team. He's got to win it. Have you ever thought of, um, I mean, obviously, I'm not someone who likes to press on this or something because, I mean, he's a young coach. I want him to do well as well. And to be fair, he's also making Sano play really well. But there was always that feeling like last season, like when, when they lost out to Widad. Have you ever thought of a case of like, I mean, what if they do not make it this time around? Do you feel that Sano might have to make a change for next season or is it like, let's go again? Yeah, no, I, th I think it's a case of let's go again. I mean, this is a guy that has changed absolutely everything uh, with Mamelu Sundowns. You look at, you know, going into match day, uh, look at the number of passes, look at the ball position, short on target, box entries as well, uh, domination aerially. So uh, he's, he's brought in something totally different, not only in South African football, but on the African continent. So if he does not win it, I think give him one more season to try. Uh, but but he's, he's, he's got to win it. He is under pressure to win it. Uh, but if he doesn't, I, I don't think he should be sacked. Absolutely not. I see. And there is one issue, though, that there's been a talking point. I did bring it up at some point, being worried and all that stuff. Man, tell me from your eyes, Charlie what's going on? Because, like, he's not, I don't know. I mean, there was always that fear factor he had. And then suddenly you see him play for, like, 60 minutes, 70 minutes. But, like, I'm not sure. Is it because he's not getting the right service? Is it because he's low on confidence? And then you go back to AFCON. How does Karabo see it when I say Peter Shaolile and his form dipping? Yeah, it's a, it's a very difficult one to answer. Uh, and and actually, the question that I asked, uh, you asked me in regards to Shadula, I asked uh, Coach Rolando Mugwena a couple of weeks ago in regards to uh, what do you do with a player like him? Because uh, probably his confidence is on an all-time low because there's a guy that uh, scores week in, week out. And his answer to me was... Uh, 
I'm going to speak to him or I've already started speaking to him, show him uh, the good things that he used to do, you know, in regards to his running, you know, connecting with the, the midfielders, scoring goals, assisting, assisting the assist as well. So he said he is going to be speaking to him, but it's very difficult to point, uh, pinpoint one problem as to what exactly has gone wrong with Shalili because he's making those runs, uh, you know, he's uh, connecting well with his teammates, he looks happy as well. Obviously, maybe confidence is not high, but it's a very difficult one. Possibly just a single goal might change uh, that. And, you know, with the running, but, uh, one goal can change everything. And he might be, you know, one of the players that also uh, helps the club with more goals and, you know, uh, boost his confidence as well. But very difficult to pinpoint one uh, particular aspect as to why he's in the scoring again. And also, just moving on to another club, Orlando Pirates. Obviously, they came off that 7-1 win. Great for them and Bolneros and all that stuff. But... Tell me something, man. With the squad that Jose has, why can't he compete for the league? Uh, the answer is simple. Inconsistent. As simple yeah. as that. Uh, that's what Pirates have been in the league. They've been very... Uh, they've been consistently inconsistent. I'm not <laughs> sure if that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> so, makes a lot so of sense. I think that's... that's <laughs> that's that's literally that. I think uh, Pirates should be competing. I think before the start of the season, uh, I went through the squads of Pirates and Sundowns and player for player, Pirates is the closest squad to Sundown to regards to the players that they have. So it's a huge surprise that Pirates are not uh, competing. And I'm sure uh, Coach Jose is also very upset with himself that he has not helped Pirates to compete for the league titles. I think he's the king of cups. Uh, he's won, uh, you know, the net bank games in eight and so forth. But for a club such as Orlando Pirates, they should be competing for the league title. They should be competing uh, to play in con uh, continental football season in, season out. Yeah, no, I, I I certainly agree with you. Does it puzzle you at the fact that he's still not been able to work it out? I mean, I'm thinking to myself, I was doing numbers last week, and some of his numbers are very similar mm. to what a super sport is or what a Stellenbosch is. And funny enough, you would even argue some of the numbers with KZ Chiefs and Orlando Pirates are not that far different from each other. And you would think one club is in disarray and one club is obviously on the up. But when you see a club like Stellenbosch and Supersport who are losing key players all the time, are you surprised that he's not able to get this team to be consistent within the league? Why do they have to scrap for second place? I don't get it. Yeah. Uh, I, th I think maybe, I, I don't want to say players are choosing matches to perform in. I think it's just a case of them not being consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Paris has got a pool of talent. Uh, footballers, you saw what uh, Liverpool and Mofuke did over the course of the weekend. Uh, Tito is, is, is an absolute uh, peach of a footballer. You know, I mean, yeah. he speaks to the ball. The ball speaks to him as well. They've got Tofatoma Barca is now sitting on 10 goals as well. He looks uh, rejuvenated and reborn of a footballer. So mm. I think really it's the consistency from the entire squad, not just a single person, but the entire uh, squad. They need to be consistent because Pirates is a team that uh, usually competes for the league title season in, season out. So uh, Jose, I'm not sure what exactly is not clicking in regards to trying to compete for the league title, but uh, I, for one, would say it is them not being consistent match in, match out. Mm. Mm. No, I hear you with that. I've got three questions left. Tell me something, man. Um, um, Oh, four questions. Sorry, man. Tell me something, man. Patrick Maswangane, player of the season, yes or no? Or is it too it's early to judge? One. Is it too I, early I, to judge? I, I, I would say that. Okay. I would say that. I would say that, yeah, early to judge. Early to judge. Okay. Okay. So, Patrick, but he's on the... Is he competing for that title? Absolutely. He's, for me, he's in the top five. Top five, 100%. Then, of course, there's another club in Soweto, man. Ish. Yeah. You saw what Chipper United did to them. Um, it's not very really happy days at this moment. But it's been a conversation of, no. Did Kaiser Chiefs make a big mistake taking out Atoswani at the time that they did? Should have they just carried on with him? What do you think? Yeah, uh, I think also under coach Afazwani, uh, the performance and the results were not coming. Uh, but you would see that what exactly is it that he's trying to do? Uh, they were starting to build from the back. You know, there was a bit of cohesion in and around the team. Uh, and what he brought to the club or the players was that culture, the tradition, because he's been there, he's been at the club for 18, 19 years, both mm -hmm. as a player, as a coach as well, youth coach, senior coach. Uh, he's played for the club. He knows what it means to wear the shirt. And I think uh, uh, it's 50-50 it's for him. He should have uh, changed, yes, changed, it's no as well, so it's 50-50, but uh, I think for me, 
of what is happening at the club is 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 is, is really poor, extremely poor. A uh, mm. club of that nature should absolutely not be going through what they're going through. And I've been led to believe that there might be massive, massive changes, you know, uh, next season in regards to the technical team, the players as well. Uh, that's what I've been hearing, but I'm just trying to confirm a couple of things in regards to the changes. But yeah, it's 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 absolutely poor in regards to what has been happening with the club and. Uh, you are not a, a bad club overnight, that we know, yeah. but this has been happening for the last couple of seasons, nine, eight seasons. Yeah. So that's pretty, pretty loth- lethargic to say the least. Now, tell me something, man. I mean, just as a quick explanation, though, uh, Smango goes to Kaiser Chiefs, not the same player at TS Galaxy. Uh, Ed Nilsson Dover is not the same player that he was at Cape Town uh, City. Dan Sane, we're not the same player. Dupree at Stellan Bosch. But why is it that some of these players, they come to this football club and they're not able to replicate? Uh, what they did at previous clubs. Is it the fact that maybe the scouting is wrong from what they're trying to sign? Or is it the fact that, what do you think it is? is that I I just look at some players and I just think like, Kunika was the defender of the season for Stellenbosch. Like, I mean, now when I watch them play and I'm like, can't be the same players. Is it the same players? So what do you think it is? Uh, it's a combination of both uh, what you said. I think there was an answer in your question in regards to say maybe the scouting. Uh, Sheikhs, let me let me just take you through something very quickly. A couple of yeah. seasons ago, there was uh, when Peter Simonot was at Sundowns. Uh, he said to me that they were tracking a player from Cape Town City at the time for three seasons. So you would understand that they scout a player for three seasons before making that decision. And at Chiefs, it looks like when a player is doing well for 10, 11 games, they sign him. Mm-hmm. Is he the right player? Does he fit the, you know, the profile of the club? Uh, does he have the personality to play for Chiefs? Does he have the character to play for Chiefs? Those are the, the, the you know, the uh, the qualities that Chiefs need to look at when signing a player. You, you can't just sign any player because he's been doing well for ten games. This is a massive club. This is an institution, and mm-hmm. and the demands of that club is that you win each and every football match day in day out. So I think, of course, the scouting and you know, are they signing the right caliber of players to play for the club? Possibly not. Yo, I mean that I didn't know that. And that 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 hits home that hits home. But the last question that I have is, man, is you can answer it any way you like. I ask all my guests at the end. Where's South African football for you right now, Garabo? Well, I think continentally, I think uh, we are by far one of the best leagues. Uh, but by far, I think probably two or three in the, in the African continent. But I think we can do much, much more better. Uh, uh, it's just that, you know, Sundowns is dominating everything. That's why, you know, one might say it looks like a, a farmer's league, but it's not. You know, we've got quality, quality uh, stadiums. We've got quality players. You know, we've got, uh, you know, the transportation, the hotels are top. Uh, the playing conditions as well, the training facilities, training pitches are very good. Uh, the Stamos stadiums are world class as well, but we can't do better. We should be doing better on the African continent. That's where my concern is. I think I'd like to see more of Pirates, more of Chiefs, more of Super Sport United consistently playing in the CAF uh, tournaments. And that's where, you know, the elevation of these players will be seen in the national team of Bafana Bafana. It will not be uh, such a surprise to see seven, eight, nine players starting for Bafana Bafana, but we'll have them all uh, cut out through from all clubs of, of, the, of the PSL. 16 or 32, if you like, uh, will come to the Mutipa Foundation. Now, nah, man, I appreciate it, man. And and you're right. You're definitely right. Hopefully, we improve on that front. Garawa, I just want to say thank you for being a guest, man. Um, really a big fan of your work, man. Like, just what you do and stuff. Because I can see, like, you see, when you see someone else in the industry and you watch them on TV or you're listening to them when they ask questions and stuff, you can hear that they love the game. And that's what I, I love about you, man, is that when I listen to them, I'm just like, he loves it. He loves the game. And that's what I appreciate. And thank you so much for everything you do, man. Who was up to par and who became our star? But also, who fell short in this game we all love? Let's find out on Muhu of the Week. The star for this week is a hat-trick hero, Tervato Mabasa. I even did a small video for him, dedicating it to him, scoring the goals. It seems like the golden boot is there. It's, it's right there. Like, I don't have it, but you can see it, right? Like, it's right there. Mabas, if you want to take it, I would say, take it. It's there. I think Ribeiro's going to fight for it, but I think the way that you're converting chances, it's right there. And as for the muhus of this week, it's not players, it's not coaches, and it's not football teams. In fact, it is football fans. Yes, Kaiser Chiefs fans giving excuses to that club for why they're losing. Ah, oh, Shanks, their pitch was not right. Ah, oh, Shanks, you have an agenda against Chiefs. Ah, oh, Shanks, you celebrate uh, Mufuking's goal better than what you celebrate Duba. So what? 
Shut up. And I'm not going to give that club any excuses. And you guys are the Muhu of the week. It's time for Bet of the Week. Get ready to win big by placing the right bets on the right games. The Champions League returns. Yep, European football is back and you will not believe this. I only have five games on my bet slip, but the odds, it's going to blow your mind. Millwall against Leicester City. I've gone with a draw or Leicester win and over 1.5. Arsenal against Bayern. Arsenal go do their business and wipe the floor with them. Real Madrid going up against Man City. Real Madrid or draw and over 1.5. Atletico going up against Dortmund. Atletico or draw and over 1.5. Last but not least, PSG's at home to Barcelona. I've gone with a draw or Barcelona. The odds, no? <clears throat> this is my gift to you, people. Eh? 10.87. Just from five games. If you want to do it with me, I think you should do it with me. Click on the link below. Remember to practice responsible betting at betway.co.za. We've come to the end of the show, and you know what that means, right? Banyana Banyana about to kick off. Hmm. Ladies, go do your thing. Go kick butt, get the win, let's get to Olympics. Before you go, hit the like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you're notified for future episodes.